Good evening from Pencast Frustration, Alan Hamilton speaking, and the date is the 29th of August 2011. Just a quick blog to you uh, to give you an update and where we're going. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like uh, just a quick word of condolence regarding Alistair Gillis. Uh, Alistair had a very untimely death uh, just this last week and my thoughts and indeed the thoughts of the team from Piper's Persuasion go out to Alistair's family and his mother Kathleen who I knew had the uh, wife of Norman. When I knew Norman Gillis, uh, Norman was uh, my teacher when I was 15 to I was 19 years of age. Uh, I was his first pupil probably. Uh, my brother Graham, who does the camera work normally for Piper's Persuasion, was also told by Norman. We knew the family, I probably knew the family better than uh, Graham, as I had been introduced to Norman Gillis by another Piper, David Perry. Uh, when we were both serving at the time the Rolls Royce by the uh, Rolls Royce uh, at Hillington as an engineer, uh, David, uh, interestingly, David Perry, interestingly, he had left uh, at 18 years of age and joined the Scots Guards and he uh, was a Piper in the 2nd Battalion Scots Guards before returning uh, after the army to I joined the police and he played Neil McClellan's band for a short while in the mid-70s before his untimely death in 1977. So I'm afraid that events like these reflect rather poorly on the past history of the British Army in connection with Piper's and uh, related uh, lifestyle, if you like. Put it no higher than that. Uh, I spoke to Gavin Stoddart at length in his interview. If you want to uh, look that one up, you'll know better what I'm referring to. But nevertheless, uh, Alistair, a uh, wonderful player, and he, as was his father, he took a lot of his music from his father. Interestingly, uh, Norman Senior, uh, Alistair's father, his father was called Alistair uh, Gillis from North Uist. So this is where uh, Ford Bears are from, North Uist. And uh, David Perry's parents are from that uh, elk, that neck of the woods also. So hence the connection. And I was fortunate enough to get to Norrie Gillis for lessons for a number of years and pick up a fair amount from that quarter. And it was no wonder to me that Alistair was such a wonderful piper because he had the roots within his father's uh, great ability. We will miss Alistair very keenly. I remember one of the last occasions I heard him competing in his 2007 US Barra uh, competition just after um, shortly after the death of Norman and Alistair was obviously feeling it very, very strongly. But they put together his usual wonderful performance, it was in top form and they cleared all the results uh, that particular day. One could say, uh, use and Barra, Alistair Gill's sympathy, but I would say he played for it that day and it was a strong field as usual. And uh, I later learned, uh, heard Alistair playing at Lord Todd and recitals, uh, very excited uh, the audience as usual. But very, very consistent uh, competitor and player over the years. And people this week have been doing far more justice to Alistair in word uh, by way of uh, uh, Piping Times and uh, various other organs, uh, Facebook, etc. Uh, everybody's been on there and speaking their own personal experiences. So uh, it's just a quick word from Piper's Persuasion. I'm sorry to 
uh, hear of the death of Alistair and my thoughts personally go out to Kathleen and the mother. I don't know uh, Alistair's family, I'm sorry. It's John Norman, of course, who has taken on the name from his grandfather and we can only wish all the best to young Norman in his future life. Uh, moving on from there, I'd like to just mention uh, the last year has been a wonderful experience. Uh, my team and myself from Piper's uh, Persuasion and in interviewing some uh, 33 people so, uh, so far. The, the next two, 32 and 33rd uh, interviews from uh, Fred and Morrison and who was interestingly taught by Norman Gillis also, and a Roddy McLeod of the National Pipe Centre are still to come up, and I'm hoping that these will be up uh, very shortly after uh, this uh, particular recording. So that's something to look forward to. We have been extremely successful uh, over the last year, I think a high quality of interview, we have had uh, some technical faults, some of it uh, quite uh, amusing, others uh, quite uh, daunting and um, yet more uh, uh, annoying to one or two of you, in particular my voice. Uh, my voice has uh, been said to be far too loud during the course of interviews and uh, the listener has had to turn uh, the volume down on me and turn the volume up on the interviewee who just happens to be very soft-spoken. So, uh, if anybody out there wishes to furnish me with a lovely uh, £400 throat mic and uh, one for my interviewee, that's very nice and thanks very much uh, in advance for that. And that would uh, ameliorate the problem, uh, which... Uh, was fine in the early interviews when the young Paul was doing the camera work. He's got all the fancy cameras and mics and everything else, and everything was just a uh, fantastic. It was only when I was allowed out myself, like just now, and uh, all the faults occurred. So I couldn't blame anybody else. Um, we had uh, rather a poor interview of Walter Cowan. And I apologise to you all for that, and I have apologised to Walter. I don't know what happened that day. I think it was to do with the sun shining in his glasses, and I moved them round out the road, the sun shining glasses, and I lost all the light. And the two of us were in a wee bit of a hurry because he had to judge a competition in about half an hour's time. And I just uh, rushed through the whole interview, which was poorly photographed and uh, done rather poorly. Walter has promised me another interview, which I'll substitute in due course of time, in the next few months, hopefully. So, Walter and I know all about that, and they hopefully will do a lot better in the future. Uh, other people have uh, say, complained about the sound, and there was one wee complaint about uh, Ian Duncan. Uh, it was a wee bit of a rush, and I was forced, and I wasn't allowing him to speak. But <laughs> that particular day, the camera had failed on me uh, a wee bit into the interview and had to start again. So I was well aware at that point that Ian Duncan's time was severely limited. It was the Celtic connections and they had to run. So I'm afraid the first wee part of the interview, I was telling him what I wanted to hear, uh, much the consternation of the viewer. Um, the day before was something similar, uh, it was the day after, it was the day after, yeah, the Sunday. Henry LaFlock's interview had to be done in a swift 40 minutes because of the taxi to catch. Uh, was a soft speaker, the only place we could do is a foyer of the hotel, the Ibis Hotel, or the Ibis Hotel, um, a, uh, just around the corner from Pitt Street, uh, Strathclyde Police Headquarters across the road. Uh, Noise, background noise, Hervey's soft voice, my big loud voice. We got the, inter the interview, we got the information, and I suppose that's the point of the exercise. We like to be a professional. Some things, circumstances mitigate against us.
So, we're aware and we try to learn from our faults. Uh, over the course of a year, uh, wonderful interviews. Uh, I have many favourites. Uh, fun enough, uh, Ian McClellan was an easy interview. He, he interviews very, very well indeed, as does Angus and Willie Morrison. These, are, these people are characters and they come across with great information. Uh, very informative too was uh, Colin McClellan on reed making and his father Captain John. I hope to go back there. I also hope to speak to Joe Noble again. Joe was a wonderful conversationalist. Um, Bob Shepard was a revelation uh, to me. Uh, probably not to most of you who know Bob better than uh, I did uh, before that interview. Wonderful interview, very, very inspiring, and linked up extremely well with another inspiring interview by Mike Cusack. So, there we have it. We had lots of good interviews, some of them better technically than others. The poor ones, technically, down to me. The wonderful ones are when the my team is available to do the job correctly. So, where are we going from here? Right. Oh, over the next two months, there'll be nothing done because on Thursday this week, 1st of September, I've been a major operation. I don't want to get to the well, ins and outs of it because uh, there's a time and a place for everything, and I don't think people are persuasion. But anyway, I'm in the hands of God and the surgeons, and I'm confident in God and I'm very, very confident in the medical team. So I've been for about a week. I wouldn't be able to drive for about six weeks, they tell me. Uh, question mark. If I could get on the saddle, I'll be there. Anyway, I have been promised interviews at the Glen Fiddock at the end of October. So that's two months' time. And I'm hoping that uh, at that time, if I haven't done any before then, I'll certainly be doing uh, stuff at the Glen Fitter. I've got two or three here, maybe four people I'm going to last you there. Extremely good uh, interviews and we shall continue where we've left off for this short interlude. Meanwhile, please look up the, the uh, other 30 odd interviews. I'm quite sure there's many that you would like to see again and uh, many you're still to see. So use the next two months to catch up and we'll see you again very soon. Meanwhile, keep watching and enjoy Piper's Persuasion. Thanks very much.